dead ledger text. Look at the writing on this tombstone. This is a ledger. This is the slab of, uh, of stone that sits on top of a grave. This means dead. This is the tombstone and the writing on the tombstone which is written in a dog Latin text, a debased Latin known as, um, in Black's Law Dictionary, it's known as the Latin for the illiterate, which is really strange, isn't it? It's a text that, um, in, in the English language, means debased in the Webster's Dictionary. Dog Latin is a debased form of text, which means criminal, debauched, immoral, and against God. Now, the strange thing here is, this is a presumption that this reads Alfred Henry Madams. But if all the grammatical rules and everything that uh, this text is governed by is correct, then this tombstone does not say Alfred Henry Madams at, at all. Because when you use this type of um, ancient Latin text, or this type of Latin um, symbolic text, it has to be hyphenated between the sides in order to string the sentence together. So what this ledger is, grammatically, is a lie. Just like all of these tombstones that exist in this, um, in this place, in this graveyard. The strange thing about it is, is this, this ledger has a two to one ratio, this slab of stone that sits on top of a grave. And these ledgers that come in the mail that also house the same all uppercase type of letter of text, it's also found on your, um, your banking contracts your contracts with the government, the power companies, etc. That ledger text that's found on the tombstones is also found in these ledgers that come in the mail that are also a two to one ratio, exactly the same as the ledger that sits on top of a tomb. A normal letter isn't, and even a, um, a registered postal letter that you go to the post office and, and get a registered mail, they're not the same size. It's not a two to one ratio. But these things with the ledgers come in and the writing, the ledger text writing, just like the, the dead ledger text here comes in there. This is also, well, like a coffin, a tomb. And I think what's happening is that when you break the seals of these envelopes, it's like breaking the seal of a, of a grave. It's, uh, that's a bad conduct to do that. This ledger text is also an engraved image because the people that make these tombstones are engravers. And God warned not to go near this text here. So it just goes to show, you know, what's happening to us. A dead man has no rights. So maybe what the new modern style of government, or maybe what governments have always had to, tried to do in the past, is render the living man as nothing more than a dead corpse, a corporation, the dead speaking. And by um, conferring its dead accounts to man, it deceives us by this grammatical deception with these texts that we assume we can read as English and we spend our whole life reading this text here when in fact it's not English, this text is not even ancient Latin, this is dog Latin, debased Latin, which destroys the essence of the text, which destroys the meaning of it. So by the time you get through life and you wind up in, inside one of these uh, graves under one of these ledgers with this type of writing on your tomb, 
that means that your life or your footprint or your birthright to this land the recognition of you that was living is now pronounced dead and when you wind up under one of these graves this type of debased dog latin immoral debauched text written on your tombstone i think that you've made it into hell and i think the serpent or the usurper that did this to you takes your estate your link to the to the mineral and the energy wealth it takes your dominion what god granted to you has been taken by the serpent I think you've got to be more vigilant. Remember what Christ said? You've got to learn to read the sign. And if you can read the sign, then you will know that that is sign, sin, immoral, debased, and against God. That's how you die. Just like God said, if you eat from the tree of knowledge, you will surely die. <laughs> I think the tree of knowledge is legal title. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Quote, then when you get further into Saturn, you begin to understand his color is black, and he was God of one of the many different Semitic tribes or groups, and one of his symbols was a square. Then you get into the square black mortarboard that the university or high school students wear when they graduate. When you graduate from high school, you come out of the processionally, processionally with a black robe, which is black for saffron, the God of Hebrews, requiring that you wear the square mortarboard on the top of your head. As I said, this is Saturnian uh, in principle. The square mortarboards are, of course, used by the Freemasons for their plaster. So that is why you wear a square mortarboard when you graduate, ultimately becoming an alumni. It all has to do with Freemasonry. It all has to do with control of the education in this country. Freemasonry is owned by the Jesuits. He doesn't go into there. Uh, Jordan Maxwell doesn't go to Jesuit, or recently has. Uh, square mortarboard on the head is usually black, the color of Saturn, Saturn, one of the ancient Hebrew gods. This is the same black used on the robe the judge wears when he is going to throw you in jail because black represents Saturn. Saturn is the old Semitic god. This is why churches and courtrooms look the same today because when you go into churches, you sit out here with the poor folks in the chairs out here in the pews, but you cannot go in onto the lifted higher elevation. You can't go inside the gate. You can't go inside the little doors. Only the priest can go inside there and officiate you. You stay on the outside with the poor folks. The altar is always raised at least three tiers because in Egypt that was the way it was always done. The altar was always raised so the people could see the representative of God dressed in black. The priest comes out of, on the altar dressed in black and he's officiating for you. He is the mediator between you and God. That is the same thing that happens in the courtroom. You walk in and you're a part of the poor folks sitting out there on your ship and here's the fence or gate that separates you. The attorneys, who are known as bar attorneys for British accredited registry, registered under the City of London, all U.S. bar attorneys, you must be a member of the bar to practice in the corporation of the courts, who are for-profit corp corporations in our legal system, and the attorneys are pledged to the British accredited registry, or bar, where the corporate papers are based in Puerto Rico. The attorneys go inside the gate, and you are the mouthpiece to talk to God and see if you can get off, and the lawyers will be the mediator between God and the judge who judges you and man. That is where all this comes from in our society of today. Jordan Maxwell, Matrix of Power. All right, we can go into court. We have a hearing and present oral arguments to plead our case. The spoken word over the written word. That's why it's Phoenician or definition. Definition, get it? This is why we languish, Old French languir, be listless, pine, grieve, fall ill. From vulgar Latin languere, from Latin linguere, to be faint or weak with our definition of language. Alpha, beta are the first two letters that make up our language. Once you start to understand the meaning of words, you will start to see this reality. There are four things to consider. One, definitions need to be understood. Two, etymology of words needs to be studied. It's the study of the origin of words. Phonics is utilized in everything. This is where the Phoenicians are attached to phonics. Example, there's three definitions that mean completely different things. There's a letter C, there's the ocean C, and then you can see with your eyes. Four word splitting, the practice of splicing words into various ways to find hidden elements contained within them. An example of the word splitting is language. Lang, gu, age. Lan means monster that protects the noble ones. Gu, the god of war, and age, the age of the zodiac. So the final meaning of the word language is a monster of war that protects the noble ones or golden gods throughout the ages. Language, as we languish. A little sidebar fun. Why do we have noses that run and feet that smell? Why do we drive on a parkway yet park on a driveway? Why at a ball field, if it hits the foul pole, it's considered a fair ball and a home run? And why do we call it a freezer burn? Did you notice the term words is an anagram for the term sword? Switch the letter S in the term words to the front and you get the term sword. The letter S goes one way and then the other. So it also crosses over the other side equally and can go both ways like the S in snake, serpent, slither, sin. The letter M is shaped like a mountain. V for a valley. T as in top. B for breasts and D for dome, and C for crescent. Do you think this is by mistake? Do you think this just happens? No, this is all by design, folks. Words are like swords because they can be used to harm you. In a way, words are more powerful than swords for the reason that they can harm or heal you at the deepest levels of your being. In Greek, the term word means logos. The word logos is defined as, quote, 
the source that controls the universe, the written word or inspiration of God, or a logical and rational argument. In ancient Greek philosophy, the word logos is defined as, quote, the controlling principle in the universe. Belief includes the word lie in it, in the middle, to be lying, be lying with an F. Alien, I a lion. They're lying to you folks about the aliens. And then when you tell your vision, you tell your lie to your vision. Grammatical deceptions. In 1966, um, we lost the pound and we converted it into dollars, pounds and dollars. The pound was a weighted note uh, on silver, it was um, equivalent to one pound of silver. So it was a, a monetary system that uh, operated on actual weights of metal. Um, shillings and um, pennies and and what have you, uh, florins, whatever it was. It was all based on an amount of silver and the pound note was a uh, representation of one pound of silver. So you could take the pound note in and redeem it for one pound of silver. In 1966 um, that changed from a dollar, from a pound to a a promissory note system like the, the US Federal Reserve promissory note system but something else changed in 1966 as well and what happened was um, our schools removed grammar and Latin from the schools in 1966 so prior to that we at school we learned grammar and Latin and Latin were the roots of the English language, or many of the roots of the English language. So, uh, and my father used to call Latin the math of English. And uh, when, in 1966, when the school um, got rid of Latin and, and grammar out of the curriculum, my father bitterly complained to the school and said that uh, the students will become illiterate. They won't know how to read if you take those things out of the, um, the curriculum. Well, I'm going to show you exactly what's happening. It's strange that this happened in 1966 too, when the, uh, the pound went to the dollar and grammar and um, Latin were removed from the schools. <laughs> so it's funny that that is. But I'm going to uh, just show you just how stupid and dumbed down Australians have become in a grammatical deception or in a, in a grammatical sense. I'm going to write Commonwealth of Australia in three different formats and you will be able to read the whole three of them or you will assume you can read the three of them. But I'm just, after I've done this I'll just explain the difference between the three of them. Okay. First let's write it in English. Can read that, Commonwealth of Australia. Now let's write it in ancient Latin, and this is going to be strange. Not many people are aware of this or aware that it that it's relevant today. But ancient Latin is the official language of the Vatican. That's that's strange too, isn't it? So I'll write that. Okay, same words. Commonwealth of Australia, written in an ancient Latin style text. And we have here, which is the two hyphens in between the three signs or the three words. 
Now I'm going to write something in Dog Latin. And Dog Latin is um, a corruption of the essence of the text. It's also known as um, the text or the Latin for the illiterate. So it's a, it's a language that's used by illiterate people that uh, can't read, that don't know what's going on. This is, I'll, read the, I'll write the same words. I'll write the same words. English Ancient Latin with the hyphens and dog Latin the Latin for the illiterate the people that can't read now English now these are all three very um, recognized languages but the thing about the uh, the grammatical standing of these three types of written language is that they don't have any jurisdiction with each other on the one document so if you've got a page of text and it contains English and contains dog Latin there is no correspondence between those two languages written on that paper and that's the reason why when the currency of our nation of our country was changed from a weighted silver which was a de jure or real money into a promissory note type of a money which is based on the United States Federal Reserve promissory notes which is really called a company script or uh, internal accounting notes that's all it is internal banking notes uh, after that happened in 1966 they removed the grammar and the Latin from the school in order that the people start to assume that this is English now you know something's wrong with that if you saw that written everywhere and you saw a hyphen in between the words even if you didn't know your um, your Latin and your grammar you would instantly know, well, that doesn't look right. There's something wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It is another language. But when you read this here, Commonwealth of Australia, without the hyphens, you will assume that to be English. And that mistake that has deliberately been allowed for you to do is actually what destroys you from standing as a true Australian, a national law, being a part of the real Australia, into coming down here into being a foreign citizen of a private foreign bank. But all of the Australians that are in here, such as the Queensland Police, the government all the government workers and all that they believe that they are Australians they believe that but grammatically and the fact as a fact stands they are the account holders of the foreign United States Securities and Exchange Commission the foreign United States Federal Reserve because this is a registered company with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission written in dog Latin and it, dog Latin the, the way they make dog Latin is by using the grammatical rules of English and mixing it with the written hieroglyphic all uppercase text of ancient Latin and by removing the hyphens they use the grammatical rules of English instead of the grammatical rules of Latin which are two very different types of rules grammatical rules of each one of these texts in order to make it look like um, 
normal English. That is the grammatical deception. I call it the Justinian deception because this whole system of deceiving people into going from the public, common English, going from common English public into the private contracts of Rome, the private contracts of, um, of Babylonian texts, of fiction, of a lie, is done through the grammatical deception of making you believe that this text is English when it has no jurisdiction whatsoever. So if you get your driver license or your passport and you assume that your name, where it says your name, and your name is written in an all uppercase dog Latin text that is really a hieroglyphic sign or um, uh, illustrative text. It's, it's um, symbolic text, which cannot be a name. Only a name can only exist in proper English as a capitalized with, with the, with the uh, first letters of the each word capitalized that um, forms a true name. Now, now that you understand that, if you go onto the website under the Governor General and you will start to see just how confusing things start to happen. Even if you ring the, the Governor General, ring the office and ask him. They've written hyphen which is right but what that is doing when they write governor general in the all uppercase text that is in ancient latin what they're saying is that this governor general belongs to the Vatican. But then what they do, I've got that written on the website, which is, which is now in proper ancient Latin, with the hyphen there, which uh, renders the two signs, governor and general, coming together as two signs to, um, in order to, uh, to make one sentence in sign. But then when they write it in English, in the common English up here, the, the, the correct language, they write it like this. They hyphenate the English. <laughs> very clever, very clever trick that these, um, these usurping um, foreign corporations, these co foreign corporate banks are doing to the people of Australia. Because what that does is destroys the English text because to create, um, to make two words appear as one name, as in Governor General, um, this would translate as this. Governor Grunel, Governor Grunel. <laughs> because that hyphen there joins, is used to join in English, is used to join a broken word back together or join two words to, together as one. And that's how um, some words are made before the word is actually made into one word. Uh, um, the hyphen is used until eventually, as time goes by, the word becomes one. But there, it, at this present time, in the dictionary, there is no such word as Governor General, and there's also no such words or name as 
Governor General with, with a hyphen. It does not exist in that English language. So what they're saying is that this Governor General is the property of the Vatican. The Vatican owns the City of London. The City of London owns the, um, probably more than likely owns the US Federal Reserve. And um, the City of London is the, is the bar. And the bar are all the lawyers. So any lawyer that is in government, such as the Prime Ministers and, and uh, what have you, most of them are, uh, or the, the, the very Prime Minister that signed us up to UniDroit um, in 1973 was Gough Whitlam, who was a lawyer, who uh, had sworn an oath to the bar, and the bar was um, uh, was the City of London, which is one square mile inside London that belongs to the Vatican. So what's happened is somehow or other, the Vatican has taken away the proper true government of Australia and replaced it with one of their um, corporations. But the only problem with the Vatican, even though it operates under um, proper recognised uh, ancient Latin signs, we have been given a fraud. This is a fraud. It's not real. Um, I'm not sure what it is all about, but I do notice that the Vatican seems to always be plundering the riches of the world. So maybe through this sort of a system. They also give us, um, on your driver licenses, as I said before, your driver licenses, um, your passports, etc. You also get your name written in all uppercase, dog Latin, without the hyphens. That's dog Latin. So, the dog Latin is, is the, the language for the illiterate. It's Babylonian text. It's text that reads absolutely nothing. If you um, translate this Governor General without the hyphen into um, English, it simply translates back like this. Governor General, written in dog Latin, which is using the uh, ancient Latin text with the grammatical rules of English, renders this as Governor Full Stop General, which is not the Governor General. And that is the same with your name. Uh, written in that, like on your driver license or on your passport, etc., uh, translates to, full stop, full stop, full stop. So the whole system is, um, is a lie. It's just an absolute lie because they are using a dog Latin text which is a debased text under under Latin under the um, legal dictionary, Black's Law Dictionary. Dog Latin is the Latin for the illiterate, for the stupid people that can't read. But in the English dictionary, the Webster's English dictionary, dog Latin is a debased text, a, a debased language, and the word debased means in. Um, in the uh, Webster's Dictionary, criminal. It also means debauched. It also means immoral. So that means it is a 
against God. You have to also remember that um, the people that are ruling this type of um, dog Latin world, this fake government, are people like the Fabians who believe in um, governments like Hitler and like Stalin, which is a which is maintains total control over the people. It puts the state ahead of the people which is absolutely dangerous because we all know the history of Hitler and Stalin and other governments in the past Pol Pot that have used this type of system where the state becomes more powerful than the people but the only way that the state in the past has come more powerful is guns but this lot of governments this new world order are doing it through uh, deception deceit lies trickery and uh, once they have gotten hold of a Hitler style or Stalin style government they in as a one complete world government then who is there to stop them they will have achieved their absolute goal at total control over the population of the planet and um, then the culling will start I'll say it's for the better but it only suits them it suits them doesn't suit these it suits uh, the Vatican and it suits their corporations and it also suits the one stroke dollar it's the biggest lie that's per perpetrated it is the biggest grammatical deception perpetrated against the um, the people of Australia the people of the world and that's how they did it through the gram grammatical deceptions of language. Question, what is the most important word of all time? The answer is no. Most people will spell it N-O, but the answer is K-N-O-W. Completely different meanings, but exactly sounding the same. It's meant to confuse by obfuscation. Matthew 11:15. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Earth is art of the heart. Earth, move the H to the front and we get heart. Hear, hear. Nothing is true. Everything is a lie, folks. They play games with us for a long time. All right. Another word that has a strong connection to the term word is the term light. Light is sometimes referred to as a photon. In physics, a photon is usually indicated by the symbol Y, which is the lower case of the Greek symbol gamma. Some etymologists believe that the Greek word gamma is where the word grammar originated from. In English, grammar means, quote, the study of classes of words, their inflections and their functions and relations in sentence, end quote. Spells are cast in schools and spelling and the bell rings at each class to disassociate from the last lesson. This comes from Pavlov's dog theory, where they rang the bell and the dog would salivate. So they instituted the bell system into public schools and most schools so that the children when the bell would ring would forget what they just learned. You must remember the people in power do not want you to take their power. So they'll give you a little way up and then they'll set up progressive taxes, but they'll never get to the top. You'll never take their power away because they're controlling everything. The ringing bell was taken directly from Av 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 Ivan Pavlov's behavioral science theory. Uh, okay, origins of our deceptive and deceiving language. Language is used to interact with one another. It's paramount importance in understanding law. We speak Phoenician each day without even knowing it. It's the language of sound. Before they had the written word, it was an oral history, oral language. Pick up the phone, phonics. When sounds, science of sound from the Greek phone sound from pi root ba to speak to tell to say what is definition it's a statement of the meaning of the term or the word or is it something else is it definition Phoenician that the Phoenicians and the Canaanites have defined the way we speak still to this day thousands of years later so you go to the elections and you make your selections but they're really gross misdirections when people vote, 
Where do they do so? In a voting terminal or polling station. People are voting, not voting, because they are going to the polls, which the electric battery polls have positive and negative to place their votes on the candidate that they want to see out in charge. The politician that receives the most votes is that one that is going to be put in the position of power. It's called power. Po it's not called power politics for any for nothing. It's also why we got credit charge cards. We're using electric. The Electrical College of Electors are the ones that actually determine who will be president, not any popular poll, poll, media, or statistic. Registering to vote is an admission that the declarant is subject to the exclusive legislative power of the corporate Congress and is a 14th Amendment citizen, a second class citizen when you register. Regis means crown, stir means to enroll. So you're enrolling in the crown, Regis, crown. By voting, you are contracting as a straw man, a fictitious character in the eyes of a law, a human resource, not a human just being. That's why they call us the Department of Human Resources, just like water resources. All right, a sidebar. Did you know the Jesuits invented the Fahrenheit thermometer? That's why when it unfreezes, it's at 33 degrees. Get it? All right, now we went through the banking stuff already with the liquid frozen liquid assets. Common law is also known as maritime law. Mar means sea law. This was in the 14th, 15th century. Like I said, the Testamentary CESQV Trust placed all lost souls at sea. So when we go into court, we sail in our citizenship to argue about loss and damages, our contractual relationships, partnerships, and ownerships. It's all about monetary loss and injury compensation. Who did what to whom? When we enter the court to play ball, we'll see who win in the docket. This is where the ships berth. The rules come down from the three blue masons degrees with phallic gavel to determine who is liable. Okay, resident. Res means property or thing. To identify is ident. Identify the property or thing. You put a P in the front and capitalize it and mince principle. So the president of the corporation of the United States of America, capital letters, Washington, D.C., is the corporate CEO, the president. He's ruling over the property or the thing. That'd be us, folks. Um, also, when you're born, you slide down your mother's birth canal and you land on your birth certificate where the hospital's paid to register and so that banker, banksters can account for you into securitized debt from the bankruptcy the United States never got out of since 1933. This is why the more debt they run up, the more we owe, and we never got out of bankruptcy since 1933, and our birth certificates are securitized, tradable commodities. All right, a government, govern, means to rule or control. Ment is for mensa or mind, to control the mind. They tell us what they're doing. Straw man is a front. A third party is put up in name only to take part in the transaction. Term is also used in commercial and property context when a transfer is made to a party. The straw man for the purpose of retransferring the transfer in order to accomplish some purpose not otherwise permitted. We're, we're, not, a, we're not humans, folks. We're a legal fictitious entity. Since your birth, your artificial person has been considered a slave or indentured servant to the various federal, provincial, and municipal governments via your state-issued, state-created birth certificate in the name of you in all caps. Your birth certificate was issued so that the issuer could claim exclusive title to the legal person created. This was further compounded when you voluntarily obtained a driver's license and social security number, also all in caps. The state even owns your personal and private life through your state-issued marriage license, issued in all caps. You have had no rights since birth, marriage, nor will you have them even in death unless you recapture your straw man. The name on tombstones and cemeteries are also in all caps. The state holds the title to your legal person. It's created for your birth certificate. That's why they give you a certificate, not the actual title. The holder in due course of the instrument, that is yourself, has to reclaim and redeem it. The straw person is a person according to the legal, per, legal dictionary. Person, a human being, an entity that, uh, uh, such as a corporation that is recognized by law as having the rights and duties of a human being. So this is how they give you the rights, but they don't give you the knowledge as being a human being. So what is a human being? It's a person of the male sex. According to Black's Law Dictionary, which they use in the Roman Catholic law system we're still under today after, a thou you know, since 1400s. A human being is a male sex, a male of the human species above the age of puberty, 
in the most extended sense of the term, includes not only adult male sex of the human species, but women and children. In feudal times, it was vassal, a tenant, or feudatory. All right, April 1933, this is when Roosevelt, the uh, Knights of Malta, and uh, Freemason uh, made executive order. All persons are required to deliver on or May 1st all gold coin cabillion now owned by them in the Federal Reserve. So they took our gold away. Now we're $21 trillion in debt, folks. Do you think they're going to do it again to us? Look at the new $100 bill. Half of it is completely in gold on the right side with a gold inkwell, a gold feather, and there's gold writing in the background. And if you look very closely, it's the second paragraph of the Declaration of Independence talking about abolishing the government, the new $100 bill issued in 2013. All right, in June 1933, we operate as a commerce. Commerce is based on agreement or contract. It's contractual law. That's why you sign your name, now a thumbprint or a swipe. You are agreeing to the fictitious character as a straw man. When the real flesh and blood step into their process, we become the surety for the fictitional straw man. It's a trust. We then become liable for the debts, liabilities, and obligations of the straw man, and we relinquish our protected characters. We stand up for the fictitional straw man. This is why when you go into court and the judge says, are you so-and-so, do you understand? And you say yes, you're agreeing to being that fictitious character. All right, corporation, the word corpse is the base root of corporation, all right? So ration the corp is to ration the corpse, the dead. You're rationing the dead, all right? And in Law's Dictionary, again, only his successors in some particular station who are unincorporated by law in order to give them some legal capacities and advantages, particularly that of a perpetuity, which in their natural state as persons they could not have. In a corporation's soul, one person holds both operational positions of the organization. A corporation's soul may be established under legislative authority. It is considered by statute a citizen of the government. You are owned. The people are in, their, are in the state and national government at that time. The public government is artificial entity. Who is a government? Point to me as a person being a government. The government is owned and controlled by the same people. It's a sole organization, not an aggregate organization. The straw man being artificial lives in the artificial place called the public, okay? This is necessary and proper because the creator and entity has the right and control of it. So they, we create it by signing our name and they take control of it by putting it, us in their system. going to show you sort of the rank of how the governments uh, sort of really work. It's, it's, a, it's a system where one would assume that um, the President of the United States holds sort of the highest rank um, because he's got the biggest military or whatever. But that's not quite so. There's ranks higher than him that he must um, uh, obey so to speak and if he doesn't obey those ranks well then he could destroy the whole the whole system but i'm going to try and explain um we'll show you give it give you a schematic or a diagram of just where these ranks or how this rank works and where um where you as a man or as a christian or as a pagan sits in this rank and um but just before we do that, the English um, explanation of this word here, it just simply says um, a system in which members of an organization or society are ranked according to relative statutes or authority. Now there's two things happening in there, relative statutes or authority. And um, each meridian or each uh, trust has its own version of laws and statutes and authority but the trust itself may be answerable to trusts above it
and uh, that's the other thing where some um, government workers and some police officers and what have you, uh, even some lawyers, are not quite understanding this, the way this system really works. Uh, this is a quick rundown of just how the authority kind of works. And um, first of all, we have God. Uh, this God is the um, is the God of existence. He's, this God is the one that created all the things that we can see, the world, and and that God is the one that um, we don't really understand. We'll never really comprehend how this whole thing uh, exists or is made, and we don't really have any um, ability to question that either. Because even in trust law, as the hierarchy goes down. Um, this type of system, the, the lower ranking officers are subordinate to the higher ranking officers. So we'll, we'll just see this. Now even in the Bible it says never put God to the test because of the type of system that we, we're dealing with. It's a trust law system. The next thing is man. God, man. Now you know, in um, Adam and Eve and in Genesis, God created man and breathed the life into man after he made him from the earth. And this is basically stating, stating that man has a birthright to the subject matter. He's a part of this world because this God created the world and also created man in it. That is our true God. I'm going to sort of show you how we've lost, huh, we're losing this God, so you've got to be careful. Um, the, the next thing that happened was in the Garden of Eden, God granted dominion, which is the highest of authority, to man. And what man did... Um, what happened in this, by granting the, um, the absolute authority, the legal title to man, that granted the equitable title with God. So man was holding the legal title to God. God was the, the director, and, and this is still evident because um, when this God decides to uh, have a volcano or, or create a, uh, a massive earthquake or create a massive storm, there's not much that man can do about it. That's, that's the fury of God. This God, no matter what you do, hate him or love him, whatever happens, you can't question that and you can't do much about it either because his fury is of the greatest. Um, and sometimes those storms and that remind us of the respect that we have or that we should be having for this God up here. Uh, what happened is God granted the, the legal title to man, so that means man looks after this planet. He's, uh, he's duty bound to look after it. But what he has done, or what's been offered to man, is this thing here, which is called the Vatican. And what that means is V A T I C A N. Vatican, which means that I can which means holder, I can. And that's the third rank down now. This is the beast of burden. And he's offered this up to man. And what he's said is, you give me the legal title and I will give you the equitable title. And um, I will then serve all the debts, settle all the debts of the meridium of the Garden of Eden, which is the earth. So then he controls the... Um, he looks out, he's the debtor, becomes the debtor of man. But man created this. God didn't create it, man did. So the God of the Vatican is man. That's Adam. That means man. Adam means man. Now, why would someone want to pay the debts of man <laughs> and that's because 
this people here, it knows how to confer the debts of man back onto man. <laughs> now the next um, hierarchy down is the debtor. So the Vatican creates a debtor for the Vatican. Man created the debtor to pay the debts of man. It's the Vatican. The Vatican creates a debtor. Babylon. Which means baby for long time. That's what Babylon is. Baby and long. Long. L-O-N. In, um, uh, in Latin, it's just child and long. L-O-N means for a long time. And that's probably what um, the surnames and the, and the infant surname, an infant, so that when you um, when you're born, you're birthed into this state of Babylon here, which is really also. Really, really, or the Roman Empire, or it's it's the the debtor of of Rome. And what Babylon does, then it needs to create a debtor. This is the Vatican, and this is really Rome. Babylon is Babel, you know, the old Babylonian text and, and everything. It's it's in the Bible. It's Babylon's been um, recognised. It's it exists and it exists today. The United States. Um, the Pentagon that's Babylon <laughs> I'll even show you why with the Babylonian text is as well and what Babylon has done is it created a creditor and a debtor creditor and a debtor and this is what they talk about in the Garden of Eden, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. Tree of life, tree of knowledge, creditor, debtor. And these two things were accounts. So Babylon had to create to create a um, remedy inside this, and to, to get man to pay his own debts is to is to turn man into either the the debtor of the of Babylon, so that Babylon could be the debtor of the Vatican, so then the Vatican could be the debtor of man, so that man is the debtor of God. But what? this thing here is trying to do is get rid of man because this is the serpent the usurper it usurps in and if it can get rid of man uh, then all of the debts that are paid to Babylon and then to the Vatican if man isn't there then he gets to keep the loot keep the gold keep all of the debts of man uh, Vatican the very symbol is also that I can holder I can and holder is is like a valley which is the banks of a river it is it is the first the bank that is the bank here <laughs> that's that's the, that is the, the director of the flow of current the currency in relation to a charge when charges are, are forced against us now these the trick down here to create the, the creditor and the debtor these two accounts are called the Christian Christian and the pagan Christian and pagan account so how does it get you to make 
how does it get you to, to hold the pagan account? Which really means the pay again account. Pagan, pay again. So why this is paying again is because man's already paid. It's already his debts are paid by the Vatican. But the Vatican are going to get man to pay the debts again for the second time. <laughs> so now we have um, God, then man. Man created the Vatican, the first data. Uh, the Vatican created Babylon. And Babylon created two accounts, the Christian account and the pagan account. The creditor, the debtor. Life and knowledge. L and K. Kill. L I F E life and kill now there's two warnings when God said to man he said whatever you do you never eat from the tree of knowledge don't eat otherwise you will surely die that was the warning now in the New Testament Christ came along and he said that in my name only my name, which is the name of an account, shall you be saved. My name only. So now we have these two accounts, which is the creditor, the debtor. The tree of life, the tree of knowledge, life, death. Death, life. We have, they're called accounts. So this account is the account of the creditor. This is the account of the debtor. Now, how do we get man to hold the accounts of the debtor? <laughs> and this is probably one of the biggest, um, the biggest tricks with where the, the uh, birth certificates and everything uh, come into being. Um, I'll, now we'll we'll name the account, and we'll just show you what's going on. This is the name. This is the. Name and surname. Have you noticed that's, that's on your birth certificate? And then when you look at your birth certificate, let's talk about John Paul Smith. <laughs> John. Paul when you look at your birth certificate you're going to see this and it will say name and surname now that's what you will assume but there's no surname on that document on the, on the certificate of birth but there is a name John Paul as your Christian name or given name and then it says surname and then that's where the Smith will be the surname that's made you sort of assume that that's your surname and then when someone asks you like a police officer or someone from the state from the Babylonian state which is the um, at the moment it is probably the United States Securities and Exchange Commission that owns all of the nations of the world as well as Canada and as well as Commonwealth of Australia and as well as the United States. Babylon, Babylon owns these things and that uh, to, in the modern day is, is more than likely the US Federal Reserve which is that bank and the, um, and the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. So if you go on to Canada or Commonwealth of Australia or any of the corporations, uh, the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, um, Microsoft, if you, if you look at these companies, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, McDonald's, they are all registered to the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. So they all stem from the one, the one world government, Babylon. Now, when you look at your name, John Paul Smith, 
if you're illiterate and you don't know what's going on and you haven't been taught how to read the signs at school and just remember what what uh, Christ said he said in my name only shall you be saved and then the other thing he stressed was you must learn to read the sign because there's two things happening in this English and sign that is uh, called uh, a Babylonian or it's actually called um, a Latin or ancient Latin symbolic text this is a descriptive text it's completely and utterly different but if you if you're an illiterate uh, illiterate pleb actually is what they'll call you this is what you will assume this name to be So when a police officer comes to you and says, uh, what's your name and your date of birth? You'll say, oh, sir, my name is John Paul Smith. <laughs> and yet the name written on the birth certificate says John Paul. So straight away, someone's made an error. Someone's made a mistake. And if you're the one that's claiming John Paul Smith to be your full name, when John Paul is your full name on the birth certificate, then that police officer has been trained to, as soon as you give a full name, which includes your surname, which is in, incorporated with your real name, it's an incorporation, uh, and a presumption, he will take um, he will take authority over you straight away. And what it is under a form of water law salvage rights because you're not John Paul you claim to be John Paul Smith and John Paul Smith in law and in fact and in reality John Paul Smith does not exist only John Paul in fact exists John Paul in reality and in fact John Paul Smith in reality in fact does not exist so that enters them into the world of fictions. So rather than you being a man, you will become down here a... Oops. A human. A human, which is the colour of man. Now when you look at the, um, the dictionaries again, um, a human, human, is a is a monster and then when you go into monster the word monster is a is a fiction a monster is a fiction John Paul Smith is a monster because he is a fiction also a human and the other thing that which is very strange about this is the minute you incorporate any two items together any two things together that are incorporated um, in relation to the Vatican or the water law it, um, it becomes a person. And a person is a... a corp oration, corp speaking, which means which means dead. So through your own ignorance, what you are stating here is that you are the surname who is dead. Now, no one forced you to do this. You did that. You claimed your name to be the incorporated name because John Paul and Smith don't exist. Uh, they exist as two separate entities, but they don't exist as one name. So you're the one that did that.
you're the one through your own ignorance and your own inability to assume that you are right. Yet Christ comes along and said, no, no, you've got to learn how to read the sign. He didn't tell you what the sign, he just said, you learn how to read the sign. Well, if you know how to read the sign, you'll know straight away that, oh, no, that's sign. That's not my name. That's no part of it. Sign is sin. Sign is sin. That's what it means. Um, even the, the, the words, S is the snake, I is one, is you, I, and N, S, I, G, which is a governance, and N is uh, mountain and water, which is the, um, which is the Babylonian, um, uh, t t it, which, it's not Babylonian, it's, it's the two sides, it's the, the, the name and the surname, it is the creditor and the debtor, N is, M is the mountain, and water is the sea. This is the mountain, which is land. This is the sea. But the N, when written, is the two. The two combined. So in the symbolism, when it looks to symbol, this is the snake, which is Satan. dead through your own false presumption that um, you thought that your name John Paul with the all uppercase symbolic Smith was one name and the minute you incorporated and you assumed that this is what you became human a fiction a person a corporation dead and of course a monster and monsters have to be controlled under um, under statute law. So you've been under the control of statute law, which is not free will, which is under what Satan wanted. You're under the control of S, Satan. And Satan or um, ha did not give man the free right to make a choice. God gave man the free right to make a choice to enter into the debtor or the creditor. But how you make that choice is by learning what Christ said, by, by studying the Bible and working out how the Adam and Eve trusts about in, in relation to 126 of Genesis where um, God granted dominion, God granted dominion to, to man over the land, the air, the sea, and the thing that creepeth. Now, if you put surname, into the Latin dictionary, surname means the thing that creepeth up from below. <laughs> so what's happened is man has been given dominion over the surname which is the person, which is the human, which is the fiction, which is the dead corporation. But if you hold any sort of um, document from the government, such as a driver license, a bank card, or a bank account, or, or, even, or even hold um, the legal title to your home, if you hold any one of those things, you're dead. You're in the tree of knowledge. You're a debtor. You hold the legal title to it and you have lost your equity because in trust law, he who holds legal title cannot touch the equity without license. And this goes right back to the Garden of Eden because when, when Adam ate from the fruit of the tree of, the, of knowledge, which is the tree of the debtor, when he applied for the credit card, the minute he did that, he was thrown out of the first garden, and the only way he could get back into the Garden of Eden is um, 
was under license. Now remember that that um, that maxim: he who holds legal title cannot hold the equity without license, and the license to hold the equity is granted from Babylon, which is the Vatican, which is the bank. So when you sit down here, when you're dead, then you need a license to do anything at all. And that's what's happening to you. You want to go fish, you want to do anything, you want to drive a car, you want to, because anything you do in Eden, well, while you're the debtor, uh, you must have a license. Now remember what Christ said over here. He said, in my name you shall be saved. So what happens is this name here, John Paul, is the creditors. The creditor. And because Christ said, in my name, you shall be saved, means that you still are living. You are not dead. You are not a fiction. You are not human. You are not a person. You are not a corporation. You are a Christian. There it is there. You are not a pagan. You are simply a true Christian. The Christians that go into the church uh, that you see on every Sunday, they are not Christians. They are pagans. They believe that they're Christian. And that's what this thing is doing. He's the usurper. He's the trickster. He's Satan is always the, the, the Lucifer, the, the illusionist where he uh, presents himself as God. Because persons, the only God of a person, which is the only God of a debtor, is Babylon, which is the Vatican. The Vatican created these, these things here. The Vatican created the, um, the incorporation. When two names or two things are, uh, are joined together, that's it. But when you're Christ, you only have one name you don't hold any um, any legal title, any, anything. When you learn how to how to um, operate this account, this Christian account over here, um, you will start to uh, realise that um, you, you can have anything you want. Ask and you shall receive, and and that's how it really does work. Now, the account name, just to finish off. This is where the trick, the real trick, has been in here. The Christian account or the credit account is John Paul. And the debtor account is the surname. The surname is not just the Smith, because Paul, John Paul, and the Smith belong to us. That's our name, and this is our um, heritage. So the both names belong to us. So the state can't make a claim over the family name or the heritage or the or the Christian or the given name. It cannot make a claim. But what it makes a claim over is incorporation. So as soon as these two names are assumed as one, that is the property of the Vatican. That is the state, the state of affairs of that governing system. This is the Christian account written in proper English and that is the debtor account the pagan account that is so if you hold this name here in proper English uh, you become the debtor so when you walk into a court and say I'm walking into this court I am a free I am a living, breathing man. Well, yes, you might very well be that. But the magistrate, who's the um, the administrator, which is Babylon and the administration, well, it's here. That's what this thing is. Here's the I on the bill. The administrator, which is the magistrate, the man will walk in, I am the living, breathing man, your, your honour. And he will say, yeah, well, it's, that's fine. Do you hold a driver licence? Uh, yes, what's your name? My name is 
John Paul Smith. Well, the magistrate is obligated to uh, set up a, a salvage trust, salvation, for this because this person down here, this man, has been lost at sea. He doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know his own name. And there's another maxim, is if you know not the name of the thing, the thing itself is surely lost. So if you walk into the court say, I'm the man, but my name is John Paul Smith, and I hold a driver license. <laughs> the poor old magistrate, he says, oh, you know, what can I do about this? Okay, so he sets up a trust, and then gives him a little bit of um, uh, justice that seemed to be done to make him feel a bit better, but still whacks him anyway, and whacks him as a debtor. And then once he's got the debt, he can't get he can't get out of it. You've got to pay because debtors pay the, the bills. And if you're one of these, the full-on debtor, that's agreed to be um, John Paul Smith because you read John Paul and the Smith in sign language, and you assumed it together. That's not his problem. You assumed that. You didn't do your, your homework. You didn't learn how to read the sign. You didn't learn your grammar. You learned nothing. You, you remained as a, a pleb, as a dumb idiot, as, as someone that's... You just remained dumb. So the, the magistrate, he's just got to administer you. The Vatican, he's got to administer, he's, he's got to administer all of you. So what he does is that he throws you on the Vatican ship at sea, in the Holy Sea. And you you lose all your rights then to land law. You you lose your your standing as man and as Adam. And only because God said, whatever you do, do not eat from the tr the tree or the f do do not eat the fruit. Be a usufruct of the debtor account. Don't do that. Otherwise, you will surely die. There's you there. <laughs> that's that's how the system works. I know it's a um, it's got nothing to do with law. It's all got to do with God and Christ, because they're the ones that taught you. They're the ones that well, the Bible sits in the court for that reason. If anyone says that um, it's not spiritual, it, it's it, it's it, of course it's spiritual, because when you walk into those law courts or those courts, they're not courts; they're tribunals. They're chambers, and a chamber is a tomb. They're dead. That's why the magistrate's wearing that black robe. He's mourning the dead. And you're walking in there, and you are dead. And the people go, oh. <laughs> Poor fellas. They're all dead. And very rarely does any one of these ones come into that court. Now, the other slighted advice. It's not really advice, but it's... When you know where you stand and you are over here and you do hold the drive licenses and you hold the, um, the bank loans and you are a good little debtor and you're paying all the bills of the state, and, um, which is very admirable of you for being that. Um, and I think sometimes the state will thank you if you're a hard worker. You will get a good life inside the state. But when it comes into um, a charge, when you've um, been charged with any form of a a charge account and you are the debtor and you hold the driver license um, to prove that you're a debtor because the name of the driver license is written in the all uppercase um, language which is called the ledger language or the dead ledgers that, that are on tombstones or it's also called an engraved image which is another thing that God said do not worship wordship the engraved images which are the engraved images that sit on top of the tombstones which is the ledgers, and that's the, the stuff that comes in the mail. But in a court, if you are a debtor, and you know that you're a debtor, then no matter if you're guilty, or no matter if you're not guilty, if you've been charged, then my absolute advice to you is to plead guilty. Still state the case, but make the guilty plea. Because in the United States, um, Libor Code, the enemy of the United States, which is the enemy of Babylon, the enemy of the administrator, is the belligerent officer. 
and the belligerent officer is the one that pleads not guilty because if you walk into a, into a court you're walking into the court saying well yes I am the debtor and I'm not going to pay your debt that's what you're saying the other thing what it does in in a legal sense the magistrates love it when you plead not guilty because the minute you plead not guilty you violate the military codes which is the, the law of the sea the, the holy sea and you put yourself into a state of conflict and once you're in a state of conflict in military law uh, the administrator has right to administer the conflict so you're handing over all of the power over you to the state because you have become the enemy of the state. not guilty you can only plead guilty and say sorry because when you have operated when you've walked into this and you've chosen to be the debtor of the state you have no rights and don't even try and don't try and get them especially the idiot people that walk in and say I am the living man so you got a drive license oh yeah lost completely dumb stupid the other thing is do you need to come back to living man one of the biggest things is th the difference between coming back to being a living man you don't have to be a, a living man you don't have to come back to walking into that trust because this is outside the system um, once you simply hold the creditor account Christ becomes your your trustee. Christ is your trustee, and uh, that that's all evident on the second certificate of birth, because on the second certificate of birth, it states in black and white that the full name John Paul Smith is in the custody of the Registrar General of the certificate of birth, which is the state. So it's st stated on that and signed. They've even told you that they um, own this. And the minute you hold that, then you become the trustee of the Registrar General. But if you don't hold this name and you simply hold this name here, then you become the director of the Registrar General. You don't have to come back to living man because Christ has given you a remedy within the world of the dead, which is the, the, the dead corporations which is from, um, from Christ on down to 2017 uh, AD. Uh, from that time, we live in the world of the dead, in the chambers of the, of the water law. But inside that system, the Christian trust is the remedy within the world of the dead. Uh, the minute you walk into a um, church, above every church you will see that sign and that sign means that's why it's found on top of tombstones as well it means dead so when you walk into a church you know that uh, that is the house of the dead if you are this over here a true Christian then you don't walk into those places because that is for the quasi Christian the, the, the people that that think they're Christians, but um, but they're not. Now, even other churches, you'll you'll see that if they ever use this type of uh, writing, the um, the all uppercase text, um, then if they're using any form of symbolic text on the signs or any form of sign language, it's another dead giveaway uh, that. Uh, in this all uppercase text, they're telling you that that is sign, that is sin, that is the house of the dead, the cross.
So even though people are walking go, oh, I'm going to church and I'm doing whatever it is, all you've got to do is just um, read the signs, go into the, the dictionaries, the, the legal dictionaries and the, um, the Webster's Dictionary, start having a look at these signs. And it's t it tells you in black and white everything. But the whole thing of the, the, the world of the dead that belongs to the administrator, which is Babylon, which is the Vatican, um, if you're down here, then you are subject to that. If you're over here, then you are still got the ability of living man, yet you hold the account that directs the Vatican. That's why the Vatican probably doesn't really like real Christians. It creates its own quasi-Christians in all of its church because it knows it keeps them or keeps the masses under control. But when you work it out, <laughs> uh, usually um, criminals don't work this out. Uh, the people that do work it out are usually the people that, um, that do love God and um, hold this God here as the true God as they should and when you do that then you are subject to the laws of the Bible like the, the, the statutes that make up the Ten Commandments and also Christ which is if you love your, um, your neighbor in a spirit of brotherhood then no war would ever happen but uh, people that are with this God know automatically know that uh, they are subject to the to the real laws of the Bible and um, and they wouldn't do anything against their own brother or their own neighbor that uh, they couldn't that they wouldn't like to happen to them so the people that do work it out and that don't need to be controlled by the state don't need to be controlled by the state because they are the true solemn people that uh, that have worked this out. So I hope that um, explains the hierarchy and the principle of how our governing system works today in this modern day society. <laughs> it's ancient and it's never going to change. <laughs> it takes back thousands and thousands of years. This is necessary and proper because the creator and entity has the right and control of it. So they, we create it by signing our name and they take control of it by putting it, us in their system. Since the government has created the straw man, it is only right that the straw man live under the rules of its creator. So far, the readers might be saying to themselves, what? Precisely what? A watt is a unit of power that is equal to one joule per second. And this correlates with the situation when people say someone isn't very bright because they need to ask the same question over again. What? What? Wait. That person is said to be dim because they are not enlightened, dim wit. You could, of course, refuse everything that is being shown, but that just creates a neg negative ionic polarity charge within your own biology. Hence, to refuse because a fuse is an electrical device that interrupts the flow of current if it becomes overloaded. I trust this will not confuse the readers. The use of the word pin is the reason that banks get you to use a pin number when using a bank card. Well, the Spanish word born translates to terminal and the point of connection to current of electricity. When people travel to and from airports or bus stations where they arrive and depart, at the terminal. And as I said, when you use the credit card, you are charged as in charge card. Logos translates to ratio, symbol, reason, idea, and logic. The ancient Greek believed that the power of the logos can be expressed through words and be used to create mystical things through sound. Have you ever wondered why the symbols of corporations are called logos? It has to do with magic and sacred geometry. The process of using logos, source, energy, and force to create things such as sacred geometry can be seen in somatics. That is where sound is used to create geometric, sacred ge geometric forms. All right, cosmology and language. You know how the day of the week got their name. Sunday, it represents the mineral gold. It represents the sun's day. Monday is the moon day for Luna or Lunatics Day. Tuesday is Iron, Marty or Mars or Tyre's God of War after the Nor Norway God. Uh, Wednesday is under Quicksilver, the day of Mercury. It's Woden's Day, another Norwegian God. Thursday is the tin of Jupiter. That's Thor's Day, okay? Friday is Copper or Venara, Venus, God, Freya's, Aphrodite's Day, Friday, Freya's Day. Saturday is Saturn's Day, the god of every agriculture and lead because it's so heavy and dense. 
There's seven days of the week. There's seven sacred planets. There's seven sacred metals of ancient alchemy, seven continents, seven seas, seven energy chakras in the human body, seven colors of the rainbow, seven tones in our voice, seven year itch, seven hills in Rome, seven hills in Washington, D.C., and seven wonders of the ancient world in the seventh heaven. And look at how one is born into the world or world. Why are we world? First off, from a pedantic perspective, this should be obvious since the world's is world on its axis. The writer of the Matrix movies also know, knew why, because the main character, Neo, is actually derived from the Latin word Neo that means spin or wave. The separation of our body from the sun works in a seven-step process. This is why there are seven major planets and give us seven days of the week. There are seven notes in the mode of music, and we also see seven in the rainbow. The color sounds and words that are world are all separated because the prefix sep comes from septum, meaning seven, which gives us the word September, which was originally the seventh month of the Roman calendar. There are seven chakras in the human body, the ancients called spinning the wheels of light. This is appropriate because their colored wheels are world, and we live in a world of colors because we are humans. Now you know why it's called humans. Hue is simply a word for color, and the quality of color determined the dominant wavelength of each color. There is an astounding amount of indi out of indication and evidence to show that we are multidimensional beings that are caught in a cycle of separation, which is a certain mathematical ratio of vibration waves holding us prisoner in an endless movie-like loop. The ratio is a ration of the god Ra, ra ratio, within the base 10 reality. 10 fingers and 10 toes is the sweetest Teo states with the meaning of 10. The fake gods that hold us all prisoner also need a ration ration us because we are their food, and a ration is the food allowance given for one day. The sep uh, ration that is given to the gods while we exist inside of this are cinematic matrix reality. Here's an important one. Soldiers are sold to die. Soldiers sold to die. And that is why they have dog tags issued to them, as Henry Kissinger is famous said. They're the dogs of war. We are told never to swear. Notice the word wear with the S in front. It can go both ways. Yet when we go into court, we must raise our hands and swear to tell the truth, the whole, with the whole in it, truth, and nothing but the truth. Yet few judges can even tell you the difference <clears throat> between the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I know because I've asked judges and they can't tell you. All right, when we submit, we place ourselves under the control of another. So when you submit an application, you are yielding your power. You let down, you put under, you reduce. When you apply, apply for an application. You put one's faculties to some task or career. Is there a war on drugs? Then why are there drug stores in every corner? Is there a war on drinking and driving and DUI, driving un under the influence? Why do they sell liquor at gas stations? To get you gassed? So this is why bail-ins are becoming so common now around Europe. A bail-in is when the banks come and take your money out of your account and say, sorry, it's not there anymore. They call it a rehypothification. This is stealing by the banks and brokers for their own purposes or called a bail-in. Uh, this is happening more and more. And with the United States, $21 trillion in current debt, I guarantee you, money in your bank account is going to be taken at one time or another, folks, because it's a promissory note and it's not your money. It's electronics on a screen, but you go and try and get your money out of there more than a, a few grand, <laughs> good luck with that. And if you do get more than a few grand and have to fill out all the forms, the IRS is going to contact you. Department of Homeless Security is going to talk, attack, uh, attack you as well. Um, and if you believe the FDIC has enough insurance to cover all your money in the bank and everybody's, think again, folks. We're $21 trillion in debt. How can they have money but print more money of fake non value behind it. This is why they're coming for the gold. All right, a police state is a revenue agent making money, revenue agent that enforces the corporate government contracts and protects the assets of the corporate government, including human resources. It compels comport, conformance, performance, no injured party necessary. One who has policing powers is found in a police state. They're enforcers of policies. That's why they become policemen. And to register, literally, is to the queen, as I said. The regis meaning king. Uh, this is why you get a certificate and not title on your cars as well. The original car manufacturer owns the title, but you get the certificate. When you enroll, you register your child. You put it into inventory. Did you know that? 
People are known as chattel in legalese. We call, uh, we call our animals cattle. They call us chattel. Again, this is why we're called human resources. And just substitute the word uh, water for humans and we're water resources. And on international well, uh, now another important thing is that our court systems, every time you challenge, you challenge up. So you go from the local to the state to the federal, and now you go into international laws. And that's even more corrupt the higher you go. So you never get satisfaction. It, it's, it's by design. All right, the matrix is furthermore the Latin word for womb, which is where our where out body ship is, our body ship is birthed and birthed. All ships find their birth when they reach the port or dock. When Neo woke up in the Matrix, he was inside a battery womb or iPod, which is why Apple Computer sells everyone iPods and iPads to reflect this. The definition of pad that concurs with this is that of temporary living quarters. We're all living on our iPads or iPods because we bit the apple of sin. Now you see here on the left that the original Apple computer sold for $666.66. Not a coincidence, folks, or a coincident. The word apple is also phonetically spoken as a pull because our body ships are receiving a toe on the consciousness dream line of reality, which is why we have a skull. A skull, yes, because a skull is an oar that is used for sculling, and a sculling is the prop propelling of a boat by an oar of the stern. John Scully ran Apple Computer for 10 years. Another coincidence. Everything in this reality is designed to make us fearful, and this starts right at birth. It has been said over and over again to humanity that man is born in sin. Man bit the apple to then continuously be reborn in his, her, his or her apple iPods, which becomes unrepayable debt. That is why uh, Webster's Dictionary defines English word debt is sin, to pay the debt of sin, which is the price of our birth or birth in the moon. Remember that seven days of the week do not include an earth day since man is truly born in sin. All right, another important one. How do you say hi to somebody? You say hello. Every time we say hi to somebody, we're saying them to go to hell. This is how much control they got over our language. Every ship, including the haunted human body, is eventually brought into port and then is docked. This is why there's a doctor that delivers the body ship because it is a new liver or liver being produced. Another, another living being that is being delivered by the doctor as docked or. Hence, doctor is phonetically docked or, and you as a human being are the or or the or that is going to be mined for gold in your mind because mind is mind, giving us the actual basis of the Sumerian depiction of the Anunnaki coming here for gold because we are the human resources that mined for gold. It's all a play on words, folks, but it has secret meanings behind it. This also displays the fact that humans are seen as chattel property or false gods. Uh, when they say it's mine, we are the endless resource being mined, and companies do not have human resource departments because the title sounds fancy. You're also or, which has an or because you're, you're the body ship that needs to paddle through this existence, which is the sea of electricity. Doctors use paddles to resuscitate someone who is in the cardiac arrest for this reason. Why do they use to resuscitate the patient? They use electrical currents, just like the sea that has currents. What else do doctors do? They perform surgery because of an electrical surge to the body patient. The doct or is also the connection to the body ship and C terminology. Also, our, our, our money is current C. Since the doctor has delivered the doct or, an or that is sitting in its berth and no longer rolling. All right, a double cross. We see them in the logos all the time. Look at on Exxon. Look at there. It's a double cross. Nabisco, a double cross. They're double crossing us, folks. An act of betraying an ally, friend, or associate. The cross of Lorraine has long a history of use in the secret societies. Uh, the Illuminati bloodlines, including the double crosses, use the crest of the Luthania, uh, Luthania, Hungary, and Slovakia. The Knights of Malta use the red cross, as does the largest company, oil company in the world, Exxon, Nabisco, etc., etc. So anyway, I just wanted to give you a whole, a whole list of these languages that we language in and how our language betrays us and how they use it against us. And the court system is rigged to put us on our ships and fictitious characters as straw man. And we have to get off the ship. We have to get away from the legal system. We have to create our new languages or we're going to languish in their dominance as we have been for thousands and thousands of years. And we have to stop the Babylonian days that have been going on forever.